Hi people, I'm going to um, play um, a teaching from a good friend of mine and prophet about um, ways curses can come into your life. Um, the video will be titled properly, I don't know how many uh, ways curses can come into your life as a Christian, but uh, you can bring a curse upon yourself, not just in your bloodline or your inheritance, but you can bring a curse into your life. And this is fascinating teaching and I was listening to it. I thought I'd come and share it with all of you guys. I'm sure he doesn't mind. So I'm going to share the screen and um, I'm not sure I'll give much commentary. I think uh, we can just listen to him. Um, so uh, let's go. In of the unbelief and choose to receive everything God promised them. Okay, many Christians struggle against curses. They live their lives, you know, like are plagued with many in, inexplicable, unexplainable problems. It seems like that there is an open door to the enemy in their life in spite of God's promises. And their diligent attempts to make it, things never seem to work out. They have one problem and setback after another. How, how do you know if there is a curse at work in your life? Sicknesses that can't be cured, continual financial lack, ongoing mental or emotional distress, especially stress and confusion, barrenness, broken down marriages, family alienation, being accident prone, family history of suicide or premature death. These can be signs that a door is open to the enemy in your life. What brings a curse? All sin opens the door. We know that. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says what? Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give the place to the devil. You see, sin gives the devil and golden opportunity to strike you and me when we have messed up and got into some mess. Um, the Bible <clears throat> lists eight specific things that brings a curse. And you might not have done these things, but they might be running in your family bloodline behind you and on over to you. Anti-Semitism, Genesis 12.3. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in the families, all of the families, okay, of the earth shall be blessed, okay? Anti-Semitism, it says here, brings a curse, okay? Robbing God, Malachi 3, 8 and through 9. But we're going to get some religious spirits stirred up here today because what they think, this is religious I'm not, I don't got time to get into another teaching today, one day maybe. He says, Malachi 3, 8 9, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. A door is open for a curse when you rob God. Hey, Nobody's asking you to give any money anywhere to do anything. You're going to have to take this word of God. You're going to take the Bible. You have to translate it according to your own. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I can tell you this. You're blessed when you give and you're cursed when you don't. Take it any way you want to take it. The Bible's clear. It's straight. How much you give, where you give, take it up again with God. Take it up with his word. Please don't judge the men of God that have these things and they work with them. It was one thing if I'm asking for money, but it's another when I'm not and I don't. I thank God for that. What I do get, I work for, or God has blessed me through someone that just heard the Spirit say give. You don't see me asking, guys. I'm just not that type of person. I've worked hard all my life for what I've got, and God gives me the opportunity to just still work and feel good about what happens here. Amen. Okay, the next one. Robbing man. Ooh, that's another curse. Zechariah 5, 1 through 4. And 
ver in chapter four. He says, I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. Now he says he's sending out the curse. He says, it shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house. Wow. And consume it with its timber and stones. People who lie in order to rob in business dealings, it says the curse will enter into their house. Oh, don't get caught up in that one because it just don't sound good. Okay. Dishonoring your parents. This is a good one. I could probably go on for hours about this one. Um, not that I was dishonorable to my parents because I wasn't. I actually loved my parents and honored them. But there's other things I could go on about. But I'm not got time for that. Dishonoring our parents. Deuteronomy 27 and 16. Cursed is the one who treats his parents with contempt. Also, don't forget the word of God. It says somewhere in there, it says also parents do not provoke your children. Oh, okay. But, but, but children, you have to still obey your parents. And parents, you still got to be treating your children right too. So I'm going to leave that in there. Okay. All right. Idle words and self-confessing is what we'll call this. Psalms 109 17 and 18, as he loved cursing, so let it come to him. As he did not delight in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing as with his garment, so let it enter his body like water and like oil into his bones. This was part of Israel's problem. The enemy is too strong for us. We'll die. This was a curse they placed on themselves. So year after year on the 9th of Av, guess what? They have found the enemy is too strong for them, and they die. No, no good, guys. No good. Covenant breaking. 2 Samuel 21, and now there was a famine in the days of David for three years. Year after year, and David inquired of his Lord, and the Lord answered. It is because of Saul, his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore, David said to the Gibeonites, he says, what shall I do for you? And with what shall I make atonement that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? Okay, so... Um that sworn Israel had sworn to protect this race of people. When Saul came in, um, the king, he says, Saul, uh, when Saul came in as a king, he, uh, he attacked these people and wiped them out a little bit. And um, so when David succeeded uh, Saul, um, because Saul had broken the covenant uh, with these people that had been made before God, um, David said, what do you want to make up for this? And uh, they said they wanted uh, a number of people to be able to hang him. Okay. As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we should be destroyed for remaining in the ter territories of Israel. Let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared, he probably might butcher this guy's name. So you hear, okay, Mesopheth, the sons of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them. <clears throat> between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul, so they fell off. So uh, David had sworn a covenant with Jonathan, his best friend, Saul's son. And so uh, David delivered the descendants of Saul up, except the sons of Jonathan, because he'd made a covenant personally with Jonathan. Seven together. And they were put to death in the days of harvest. 
and the first days in the beginning of barley harvest. So he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from there. So they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God headed the prayer for the land. These four were born to the giant and Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. My gosh, that's covenant breaking. Okay. So um, men used to make a covenant with each other. It's like a, a deal. It was a really um, big process. And, um, you know, you made this covenant with a person and they become like a bonded brother to you. And um, it's really, um, it really annoys the Lord when you break a covenant. No good. Don't do that. All right. Idolatry. Deuteronomy 27 to 15. It says, Cursed is the one who makes a carved or molded image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and sets it up in secret. And all of the people shall answer and say, Amen. Don't do that, guys. That's a big one. We just passed this month. That was a tough, tough month we just went through. A month of Tammuz. It was talking strictly about this. The month of the idol, guys, with the golden calf. My God, my God. And it talks about in that month that old idols will try to revisit. You don't ever think that the word of the Lord is true, upright, and correct, because I'm going to tell you something. That's a tough month of old idols trying to raise up. You better be on your face in that month every year. Tammuz is a rough month. Now we're entering into this. Okay. Is it bad? No. You can make it good by getting away from the curse. Praise God. Amen. Okay. So broken relationships is another between generations. Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Um, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Parents, child conflict. If you have done anything to stir up animosity, frustration, and anger in your children, confess that. If you are guilty of any of these sins or you see any at work in your family line, the Bible says this leaves a door open for the devil and God does not want our lives under a curse. Amen. <clears throat> How do we break the curse? Wow. Okay. Not hard at all. God has made a way for us to break the power of every curse, guys. Galatians 3 and 13 and 14. Jesus redeemed us from the curse by becoming a curse for us. <clears throat> Jesus took the curse so we can have the blessing. <clears throat> by shedding his blood, Jesus paid the price to break every curse. But we must, listen very good, repent. Repent, repent. It's, like, it's interesting. Uh, two nights ago, the Lord uh, had me uh, do... A list of um, repenting. I, I repented. I, I made an apology to all the Jezebels in my life that I hurt, which was my mother, father, sister, brother, my wife, and all the other Jezebels that uh, followed after suit. I repented and said sorry to everyone I'd hurt. I, I made a public apology to the fivefold ministries that I called false prophets and false teachers. And I repented of that. I repented and made an apology to the established church of Christ Jesus. And uh, I repented for my bad behavior and bitterness towards the church that has hurt me and rejected me. And um, I, I made uh, an apology uh, to, um, uh, to Jesus for misrepresenting uh, Jesus' character. And... Um, what he said in a prophecy today that he gave me, which is uh, the video I'm, I've just loaded up before this one, and um, you might want to hear it. He, he, he said in the prophecy that I'd entered into a new covenant. What I'd actually done is remove all the curses in my life through those four repenting acts that the Holy Spirit led me to do. And um, my friend Dundee, 
uh, said that um, a whole lot of um, uh, spikes, uh, he saw a whole lot of spikes in me and they were all getting taken out and the Lord was healing it all. And that, that was all the curse that was in me and the um, witchcraft and all sorts of stuff that was in me. And so I'm going through all this healing, but it's interesting that the Lord said, uh, that I'd entered a new covenant with him through Orti's prophecy. I really uh, recommend you get a prophetic word of Orti. Um, you know, save up. It's 40 American dollars. Save up for one and um, get a word of him. And receive that by faith, okay? To deal with the curse, first repent of that sin and that it caused it to come. Take up jesus and his authority and break it from your life you can do this right now all you got to do is just do it to deal with that curse just repent guys of is a month it's what gives us a choice we can choose to receive a curse continue with a curse or break a curse receive the promise choose to believe it and enter into his blessings amen okay so God is really doing. So uh, I, I hope that um, you're encouraged by that. Um, and, uh, and that was helpful. Um, in the description tag, um, I'll have Orty's ministry uh, um, website address where you can request a prophecy. And in the description tag, if you can find that on your mobile phones, I'm going to have a link. Uh, to his uh, YouTube channel. He's a tremendous teacher. He releases um, uh, amazing uh, teachings and uh, words over the month and words over um, America. And, uh, and I really recommend him. He's a very accurate prophet. Uh, so I hope this has encouraged you and blessed you. I hope that you learned something from this. Uh, if uh, this, you saw this video and you, you don't surf my channel, you're not one of my regular listeners. Uh, you're welcome to look around my channel at the moment. I'm, I'm doing a conversation with the Holy Spirit um, and interviewing and uh, talking to the Holy Spirit, videoing that. I've done 44 videos of that. And um, I'm, I'm doing um, a series on the parables of Jesus. And I've done uh, 21 videos of that out of 54 parables. And so um, there, there'll be two series that you can watch if, if you, uh, you um, join my channel. And uh, you can do that and subscribe and press the bell and press all and you'll be able to uh, uh, do that. So um, God bless you and keep you. May Jesus' light shine upon you and give you rest. Amen.